Welcome to another exciting episode of Beastipolosis, where we talk about everything hairy and extinct. I'm your host, Benjamin Berger. Have you ever drank an ice-cold glass of milk, or sliced into a piece of cheddar cheese, or digested a beautiful hamburger to wonder, where did cows come from? Cows. Yes, today we're going to be talking about the remarkable fossil record of cows. All of today's cows belong to a single species called Bolos perimnia genius, which are divided into two uh, groups, the traditional domestic cattle and the humped and droopy-eared Zubu cattle of Africa and Asia. These two groups are sometimes placed in different subspecies, but both are domesticated versions of a wild extinct cow known as Uruk. Now the extinct Uruk were the wild cows that roamed across Europe and Asia and even North Africa during the late Pleistocene until 1627 when the last Uruk died in Poland of old age. Oh, this was a sad time for around 1628 the dodo bird went extinct as well. There were a number of domestication events in the history of Oryx, and most of the domestic cattle that we have with us today are descendants of about 80 individuals that were domesticated in the Middle East around 10,500 years ago, although the Zubu race of domestic cattle likely were domesticated as far back as 25,000 years ago. Although it's difficult to tell the difference between wild, wild uric bones from domesticated cattle, and most of these dates come from molecular estimates from mitochondrial DNA. Oryx wild cows were much larger than today's cows, with a shoulder that was nearly six feet in height, and their horns, which included outgrowths of the frontal bone of the skull, could reach up to three feet. Based on observations before they went extinct, the auric juveniles were chestnut color, kind of a brownish color, and in adulthood they were dark brown or black with a white stripe along the back. Lamenting the fact that Oryx were extinct, two German brothers in the 1920s and 1930s, Heinz and Lutz Heck, um, bred different breeds of cattle to approach the same look as the original Oryx, with the plan to release them across Europe. Today, these cattle are called Heck cattle, and although they're not truly Oryx, they do approach them in similarities in appearance. It's like the Jurassic Park of cows. The oldest Oryx are known from India and date around 2 million years ago. Oryx reached Europe and India and Asia around 270,000 years ago, about the same time as our species was originating in Africa. Cows belong to a tribe of, of closely related living and extinct uh, species called the Bovini, um, and it includes uh, Cerutius, the Cape Buffalo of South Africa, Bos Gruntius, the yak, Bolobos, the water buffalo, Anoa, the dwarf buffalo, and the bison. The American bison or buffalo of the American West, as well as the endangered European bison, Bison bolosus. The American bison arrived in North America about 500,000 years ago during the Pliocene. And there's three different species. Bison latiafrons, which is the long horned bison, and bison antiquus, which appeared about 250,000 years ago, and finally the modern day bison, bison bison, which appeared around 10,000 years ago in North America. Fossil members of the Pleistocene genus Hemibulus are known across Europe, Africa, and Asia, and they resemble cows with their two wide horn cores. One of the best known of the early fossil members of the bovini is Leptobobus, which is known from the Pliocene across much of Europe and Asia. It resembles a more gracile antelope than a cow, but it still retains the distinctive paired horns. Fossil cows are also known from the Pliocene of Africa, including the similar Ugandax from Ethiopia. More distant related to cows are two living genera, 
Boise Lafius of Asia, which is also known as the Blue Bowl or Nagia. Boise Lafius were introduced in North America, where wild introduced herds are known from the border between Texas and Mexico. Boise Lafius resembles a cow, but with a a shrunken sort of squeezed head. Another member of this distant related group is the bizarre four-horned Tetrasaurus, which is also known as the Doda. The Doda has four horns on top of its head. Living across Asia, today Tetrasaurus is a small antelope and doesn't really look like a cow. Another early cow relative is the Iranian Ermatherium, known from the Miocene, and it had a really wide rooted horn at the back of the skull. One of the largest of the bovids is Pelio Orvis, which is estimated to have weighed up to 2,600 pounds and exhibited huge horns with cores that were over three feet long or about one meter each. They lived in Africa until fairly recently, about 10,000 to 4,000 years ago. One of the earliest of the bovids is the early Miocene fossil, Eotragius, known from Asia and Africa in rocks dated as far back as 18 million years ago. Eotragius resembles a medium-sized antelope with two rather ordinary looking horns on its head. In fact, Eotragius is likely the ancestor of all the old world antelopes and cows, and the oldest known member of the family Bovidae. The family Bovidae includes all mammals that have paired horn cores, which is part of the frontal bone of the skull. These horn cores are covered in a sheath of keratin. The family Bovidae includes many African, and Asian antelopes, such as the gazelles, the spring bucks, the soggy, as well as goats, capria, and sheep, orvis. The North American antelope, or pronghorn, does not really belong to this group, but is a remnant species of a purely North American diversification of antelope-like creatures that lived during the Miocene to, uh, to recent. Further back in time, during the Middle Eocene, about 40 million years ago, there's Archaeomerix, known from Asia, an ancestral ruminant. You'll note the lack of horns. Ruminants are a large group of mammals which digest food with the help of a four compartment stomach, which requires that food be barfed back up into the mouth and rechewed as cud. Okay, okay, okay. That is gross, cows. But I guess efficient. Early well known ruminants of the Late Eocene include Leptoromerix, Hyepsidus, Semimerix, and Hypotragulus. Ruminants are members of the mammalian order Ardeodactyla, which includes all mammals that walk upon an even number of toes, or ungles, or, or hooves. Ardeodactyls are also distinguished from other members of mammals by having a very specialized double pulley astragalus bone in the ankle. This allows the artiodactyls to be really effective and efficient runners with a pulley system built right into their ankles. The earliest known artiodactyl is Dicodexus, which appears in North America, Europe, and Asia right at the base of the Eocene epoch 55.5 million years ago, and is ancestral to all subsequent Ardeodactyls such as camels and pigs and deer and giraffes and whales. Yeah, whales. <laughs> That's a whole nother episode on its own. Well, now you know a little bit about the fossil record of cows, and I'll see you next time.